If you're thinking about buying a house on a lake in Michigan, you need to watch this video. I'm gonna cover all the things that you absolutely need to know before buying a house on a lake here. So Michigan and lakes sort of go hand in hand. We have over 11,000 inland lakes here and there's over 387 lakes in Oakland County alone. Lots of lakes, no oceans. So if you wanna make a move to a lake house, in the Metro Detroit area or even up north, this list is gonna help you. First things first on the list is the price. I know that you know that it's expensive, but those houses are always worth more than the surrounding real estate. So when you look at like websites like Zillow and they say that they're not worth very much, it's because Zillow doesn't know. Zillow's a robot. Zillow's just grabbing random houses around from the other areas. So if you buy a house on a lake, it's worth more when you bought it and it's going to continually be worth more because it's on a lake and everybody wants to be on a lake. The next thing you need to know about buying a house on a lake is the water and sewer situation. Oh, gross, I don't hear about that. Many houses that are on lakes do not have city sewer or water connections. You're gonna have a well, like not like a well like with a bucket, but like a well. You're gonna have well water and you're going to have a septic system. Totally different than city sewer. If you're going to buy a house on a lake, make sure that you have that septic system inspected. Same thing goes for the well. You wanna test the well for any heavy metals or contaminants that are in there so that you can get all that taken care of before you move your family in there. And if there's something wrong with the septic system, that can be an extremely expensive thing to fix. So you wanna know about it beforehand, not like after the fact. Also, if you're gonna rent this place out, you need to know of it as a septic system because renters don't really care as much about your stuff as they care about their stuff. So you have to let them know like, hey, don't flush any weird things down there because it's just going into a tank. The next thing you need to know about buying a house on a lake is the privacy situation is limited. The number one thing that people want in their lake house is big windows. Everybody wants giant windows so that they can look out into the lake. Well, the thing is, is that if you can see out, people can see in. You can't be like walking around all naked inside your lake house. You'd be looking out at a sunset and somebody's looking in at a full moon. <laughs> I see what you did there. So if you're looking for a house on a lake in Michigan, look for one with like a good mix of like tree cover and everything. You don't want something that's blocking all of your view, but like a nice, you know, little variation there. The next thing you need to know about living in a lake house is the elements are not kind. Depending on the distance from your house to the lake, you have to remember that there's not really a buffer there to protect your house from other stuff. It's not like you're living in a subdivision where you have other homes and trees and things to sort of block from wind, snow, all that stuff. So it's going to take a toll on your house. You're gonna have higher maintenance costs because of being on the lake. Shingles can get all destroyed, your siding gets all messed up, but that's just part of lake life. The next thing you need to know about buying a house on a lake is renters love lake homes. If there's one place Airbnb investors love to buy, it's on a lake. So you need to know that before going into it. If you're buying in like a subdivision, it's usually not a big deal. There's usually not a lot of places for rent, but if you're in Northern Michigan or anything like that, you're probably going to have renters around. You don't want to move into your like dream lake house, find out it's like party central on, on the left and on the right. Unless you're like a big partier in the center. Whoa, party house. On the flip side of that, if you're buying a house as an investment, as an Airbnb, and you're buying it up north or wherever, make sure that you're actually allowed to rent the place out. A lot of townships, cities, and even HOAs are limiting all that. So they're saying you can't rent these places out. So you don't want to get knee deep in the in the purchase agreement and then find out, oh, we can't even buy this place. Like we can't rent it out. So see ya. The next thing on our list goes along with the last thing on our list is the noise. So this goes hand in hand with renters, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. So if you've got renters on either side of you or anywhere around you, you're going to hear them for sure. I mean, people love to party on lakes, but also you're going to hear sounds like the sound of boats and jet skis and snowmobiles ripping across the lake. It's just what happens. And remember, Sound carries over water. So you could hear somebody on their cell phone out on a boat half a mile away. You can hear every word of their conversation because it's just like glass. It just like reflects sound and light. Leave the science to the science guy. The next thing you need to know about buying a house on a lake is the insurance costs are different and can be different. Some houses that are on lakes require mandatory flood insurance. So you can go to the FEMA website and you can look at 
what areas, towns, or cities, or actual neighborhoods of which places actually require mandatory flood insurance. This is different than your property insurance. This is a, a separate thing that you need. Even if your house is not on the list and it doesn't say you need flood insurance, check with your insurance person. You might need something. The next thing you need to know about buying a house on the lake is the depth of the lake. A lot of people just see, oh, it's on a lake, it's fine, I'm gonna, this is gonna be great. But no, it's not always great. Shallow lakes are usually muddier lakes. Deep lakes are usually nice and clear. Some of the ultra beautiful lakes in Michigan are also some of the deepest lakes in Michigan. Now, if you're buying in the Metro Detroit area, most people don't care. I mean, it doesn't matter. You're like, oh, I'm on a lake, just don't care. I just, I like looking out seeing the sunshine dance across the waves. The next thing you need to know about buying a house on a lake in Michigan are the safety concerns. This is a very real thing. Now, if you have an in-ground pool in your backyard, you can put a fence around that and all is well. Kids won't be falling in or shouldn't be falling in. But when you have a lake in your backyard, it's a little bit different. You can't always just put a fence up and most people wouldn't want to put a fence up. And it's equally, if not more dangerous than having a pool in your backyard. Before quarterback Matt Stafford left the Detroit Lions, he and his wife Kelly actually moved, or they said they were moving, out of their current house, which was on a lake, because they were expecting their fourth child. And they thought, oh, this isn't very safe for a baby to be running. It was fine for the first three, but not for the fourth one. I think that was BS because they ended up moving to the LA Rams, and that's a whole other story. Go sports! So what do you think? Did you watch this and you still want to buy a house on a lake? Well, if you do, Reach out, let me know. I'll be your lake house guy. But if you're still looking for a place to live in Michigan, check out some of these other videos and playlists here, and I'll see you there.